buttons and pulling triggers. This is Gun Funny. Welcome to Gun Funny episode 23. Today we're going to chat with Jonathan from Crafted Ballistics, make a prank call about indestructible packaging, and talk about DC precision. Today's panel is Sean Heron and I'm Ava Flannell. How is everyone doing? I'm having a great day. Oh, I am too. <laughs> it's awesome. How about you? Jonathan? Pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> This is already going so well. I can't imagine how it could get any better from this point on. So we actually had some tech issues. We were trying some new tech on the back end. I failed. It's, uh, you know, this is, it's what I do. I fail epically and often. So uh, are you going to dock my pay, Ava? Probably. I mean, Mm. literally, you have one job. I mean, I've got like 7,000 jobs, but. Well, that's good because after today, I think you're going to be fired. (laughs) Oh, man. Crafted Ballistics is hiring. Oh, perfect. perfect. <laughs> you don't. You don't. I, no. I know. I know. We can't okay. really see each other right now. You can't see the video, but I'm literally. I'm just like. I'm giving you that. Like, don't do it. You're going to be screwed. Right. Your business is going to go under. No, I've got a ton of videos out there where I work at other companies and stuff, and it always turns out okay for me in the end. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, nobody dies. Well, yeah, and I mean that is the key, right? Workman's comp. It's a huge thing. But hey, before we get into the show, let's talk about Huntac gear. Ava? You, Sean? I got this hat from Hunt Act Gear. That's really cool. I'm actually still waiting to figure out how it's going to harm me. <laughs> uh, so, Hunt Act Gear. They make some awesome stuff. They do? Um, literally, like, what's your favorite thing about it? You know, so I like a couple different things. They have a couple different product lines. They've got their AR-15 uh, product line, which is the V1 series. They've also got their hunting line, which I, I like a lot. That's their Orion chest rig. Um, I've had the opportunity to work with both, and, and I really like them. Uh, so let me tell you what I, what I look for when I look to buy from a company. I look for good prices. Mm-hmm. They've got that. I look for great people, and they definitely have that. Although, you know, sometimes I question because of the things that he sends me, like the positive AIDS test results and the uh, illegitimate bastard child notification. Those were kind of bad, but Jake is a great dude. And, you know, made in the United States. I think that's also very, very important. And I know they make their stuff over here, giving jobs to Americans. And those are the, those are all great things. So, you add all those together, equal Hunt Tech gear. And I'm always down with that. Mm-hmm. That's what's up. Yeah. What's that coupon code? GunFunny15. And that gets you 15% off. What's that website? HuntTechGear.com. Exactly. So, now it's time to talk to our guest and deconstruct it. Learn the things you never knew on Deconstructing the Industry. So, Jonathan, I met you, I don't know, how long has it been? I mean, unofficially met you. We haven't met face-to-face, but we met uh, over Instagram or Facebook, I think. No, I think it was Instagram. I believe it was Instagram. And I think we're going on at least a year. Uh, I know that you sent me one of your products, which I use every time I teach a class so that students can, you know, they can see uh, what hollow points look like upon expansion. Um, so for for uh, for listeners who don't know what you do, can you describe, you know, what types of products that you make? Sure. I make pretty much... Um Ammunition displays, casted in resin, so you can see a 360 view of a projectile, let alone a bullet, if they're not pretty familiar with how it looks after it, it expands once it hits its intended target. Mm-hmm. And so what was the first product that you guys decided to make? Well, the first product, it was just a standard hollow point next to um, an unfired cartridge. Uh-huh. That's, it's pretty small. It's pretty much one of our best sellers. And then since then, you guys have made a bunch of different stuff. Like um, recently I saw you made a, a handgun and internally you can see where the ammo stacked in the magazine and then there's one in the chamber. Um, I mean, you guys have, uh, when I say you guys, I'm assuming that you're you're getting help. But is that actually even the case or is it just you who's making all of this? 
Um, it's pretty much 99% of me making it from the time it gets shot to the time it gets collected, from the time it gets casted and finished product. Wow, that's crazy. So how do you come up with these ideas? Um, my mind is racing a million miles per second every day, just coming up with new ideas, trying to stay ahead. I don't want to say it of competition, Uh but... I just want to stay ahead, get a lot of new ideas and different ones. A lot of customers call me and say, hey, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? And, and then I'll like, filter through them. Some of them are cool. Some of them are like, mm, I don't know. But for some reason, the ones that I don't like, those are the ones that sell. <laughs> right. <laughs> that, it's, that always happens. Wh- which ones don't you like? Uh, if I have a layout and I just have expanded bullets laying on the table, I'll just grab them and mm. I'll just throw them in my, my mold. Yeah. And I'll make it and I'll look at it and I'm like, this ain't going to sell. Sure enough, when I post it, boom, it's gone like in 10 minutes. People love it. I'm like, wow. That's awesome. So I was looking at some of the ones that have the the case, the powder, the projectile, and then the expanded projectile. I think it's really cool how you have the powder kind of just floating freely in this little capsule area uh, inside the case. I think that's pretty awesome. Was that something that you did from the beginning or something you picked up along the way? Uh, That's something I picked up along the way not too long ago, actually. That's just the most recent pieces I had made. I only made three of those, and those have been selling pretty good. Um... I saw a couple of posts on, on Instagram. Um, I'm not sure if you saw it. It says a definition of a pew-pew. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I yeah. looked at it, and then I'm like, hey, why don't you make it 3D instead of 2D? So then I just thought about it. I had to get some crystal vials, got some gunpowder or some powder, depending on what the customer wanted, and then I just put it in the vial and then just laid it out, and there it was. So how do you – what is the, the process that it takes in order to make these products? Um, the process basically is just to get any hollow point bullet, set up my ballistics gel on my table, shoot the ballistics gel, collect the bullets that are expanded. Some of them don't come out as good as you want them to. Some of them are missing petals. Mm -hmm. That's kind of part of my QC. I I don't, I want the customers to get everything they paid for and more. So I don't want to just give, give them a half-ass job and have them missing petals on a flower. Mm -hmm. So I got to toss those out. So I get those, bring them back home, have to, lay, have to lay them out in my mold, call the customer to verify the layout, or if it's just my idea, I'll just come up with a, a layout, cast it, wait 24 to 48 hours for it to cure, pop it out of the mold, stand, start sanding it, and then polishing it up. And when you're, when you're shooting this into the ballistic gel, are you doing this like at your house, apartment? Do you go to a range to do so? I do it in my restroom. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was like, that is awesome. <laughs> so I'm not sure if I told you, but I also work full time at a shooting range here in Southern California. Okay. So I have all the anemones of a shooting range at my disposal. So I come in before work and or after work. If it's not busy, I'll set up what I need to set up as far as my ballistics gel and my bullets and then fire away. That's pretty awesome. So it's all ballistics gel. I, I, I was wondering if it was water or what. Mm-hmm. What you actually use? So. Um, some people use ballistics gel, homemade. Some also buy it online because it's readily available online. And then some people who don't want to go through the hassle of making it or spending a lot of money for it because it is expensive, they'll go ahead and just use like a 55 gallon jump of water. Mm-hmm. But there's certain things that I don't like that water does to it. And we're in California, so I, I don't want to waste water. <laughs> that makes sense. We're always, we're, we're always in a drought. Exactly. No, that's definitely responsible. Um, so the ones that you cut in half, is that kind of a newer type thing? I don't remember seeing those before where you actually cut the entire cartridge in, in half. I thought I thought that was actually really cool looking. Um, actually, yeah, that I have a machinist. He is located in South Carolina mm-hmm. and he actually cuts them for me. So I have to outsource those and then he actually sends them back and then I go ahead and cast those as well. I'm just looking. You guys actually, you have shift knobs as well. I could actually put that in my Lexus. <laughs> that That's awesome. what's up. Knobs. We have shift knobs for vehicles, and we have also um, reloading knobs for the reloaders out there that have a reloading bench and have yes. a knob on their reloading bench. Nice. Huh? Yeah. You or definitely. if you have cupboards and cabinets, we actually make little pull knobs, smaller ones. Wine bottle stoppers. Oh, yeah. yeah, wine All wine bottle stoppers. Now you're talking our language. Yeah. I mean, literally... It's it's amazing actually how much stuff you've come um, come up with. I mean, I'm just like browsing through your website and you 
when I first met you, I mean, you had like a decent amount of stuff displayed on your website, but I mean, it is like quadrupled since the last it time has, I was right? on your, yeah, it's, it's crazy. Um, I remember. So oh, I one page last time. Yeah. <laughs> so you mentioned you live in California and Correct. as of uh, the new year, they've implemented new ammo laws. How does this affect you? Um, if, well, it kind of doesn't because I already work for the shooting range and mm-hmm. therefore this establishment already has an FFL. So it doesn't really affect me. But if I didn't work here, it would kind of affect me because if I were to buy certain projectiles that are kind of hard to find, for example, like the Black Talons, mm-hmm. I would actually outsource them online and purchase them. But a lot of sellers are private, so they won't, they won't ship it to an FFL, let alone California. Once they hear California, oh my gosh, forget it. They don't even want to deal with California in regards to firearms or bullets in general or ammunition mm-hmm. Dang. but since I, I work in the industry and I work with an establishment that has an FFL it's, it's good to go it doesn't really apply to me and I feel pretty blessed and you mentioned in your bio that you are you're going to school for uh, for criminal justice and you oh, you're still finishing correct. up that d- degree so what do you eventually are you going to pursue this long term or is this just something that you're doing until you get your degree and then you kind of travel down a different career path actually i'm sorry um on my i, I already have a degree in criminal justice and i'm just trying to finish up my business management one okay. as far as this being mm, long term for now it's 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 doing good i love what i'm doing here Mm-hmm. Um, I've been helping a lot of different companies out there, a lot of firearms instructor, a lot of police uh, departments, a lot of law enforcement agencies. So it, it's pretty good. I mean, it helps pay the bills. Yeah. For sure. Tell us about the process of making these. I already so the asked. process of making these. You did? Yeah. Did I just have a stroke? I think so. I mean, I did, right? <laughs> I asked you what the process was. Well, no, I thought you asked him like how he did the bullets, but I, I'm actually more interested in like the resin part. Okay, well, the resin is kind of like a two-part resin. Um, it's a polyester type resin. So I got to mix it. It smells like model glue, if you ever worked with models before. Uh, yeah, a little bit. It's, it's, it's pretty bad. So I got to mix those those two up, and then I have, have my layout ready to go. I'll go ahead and pour, pour out my first layer because I need these bullets to um, stand on, t- on something, if mm-hmm. you will. And once I have the layout correct, I'll just pour the other half in and then just make a little bit more adjustments, make sure everything's good to go, and wait 24 to 48 hours, and hopefully everything comes out right. How often do you end up with, like, bubbles or just something, some other kind of imperfection that you just basically have to toss or, or whatever? Uh, bubbles, not too much. I kind of, I don't want to say mastered, but I, I pretty much got a rhythm down for the bubbles. Mm-hmm. And as far as just secondary ones, so it heats up so much because you have, to, you have to add catalyst to it, so it heats up really hot. Sometimes I might put a little too much, and it actually cracks the piece, so therefore I just totally have to toss it. Oh, wow. That stinks. I mean, you could probably sell them, like, on, on create your own black market. And be like, yeah, this is just, this is stuff. It's not crafted ballistics. It's it's crap, crappy <laughs> ballistics, <laughs> and it's half well, price. To be fair for everybody, as far as with their budget, honestly, if it's a secondary and it's not that bad, I will sell it on my Facebook page, mm-hmm. and it actually sells. You know, because people can't afford um, my other pieces that are pretty high end, for example, that actually had a flaw. So then I'll mark it down pretty significantly, and and they'll still take it. That's pretty cool. What's your most expensive piece? My most expensive piece right now is probably my Barrett MRAD okay. Mini model. And describe that. Approximately. The Barrett Mini model, it's, um, it's an MRAD Mini toy gun, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, Barrett sells them on their website. So I got an idea. I, I, I bought one of those, and then I said, okay. I called up Barrett. I said, what's your number one selling caliber in that rifle? And they're like, well, when we build it, it's going to be the three thirty eight that everybody purchases I said, okay fine so then i bought some 338 ammo and then i got the toy and then i had to get an extra big mold because i never had this mold before mm-hmm. how to get that custom made at, for, from my molder in oregon and then it's basically the toy gun and then the 338 lapua bullet underneath and then i got some official logo in, insignias from uh, barrett that i put on the bottom left it's pretty big it's not it's approximately 
approximately nine by three by three inches. Hmm. Wow. So it's pretty big. And uh, Barrett was okay with you putting your name or their name on your on your product. Um. Well, kind of. I mean, I told him. <laughs> um, so far, I told him, "Hey, <laughs> hey, Chris." I well, because Chris, I I was talking to Chris on Instagram, and and he said, "Yeah, that's." He said it was okay, and then I'm actually supposed to meet him up at SHOT Show and present him one personally. Nice. So hopefully I get to meet him and his dad. Well, mm-hmm. just just a word of warning <clears throat> that don't ever put Jack Daniels logos on anything because then you'll get cease and desist letters. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. No, but we do have shot glasses and pint glasses and whiskey glasses with projectiles that are in it, but it doesn't say... Jack Daniels. Okay, perfect. Then I think you're going to be just just fine. Uh, and again, you're speaking my language with the uh, shot glasses, whiskey glasses, the wine stopper, the bullet coasters. Those are all awesome. So I know that stuff all came later, right? Because I think the last time I looked at your website a while back, it was just kind of like the <clears throat> the static displays, which are great as either you know desk things or decoration mm-hmm. or uh, teaching aids or training aids for instructors, mm-hmm. things like that. But now you've just got so many other products out there that are like day-to-day use products like keychains and uh, tie clips and cufflinks and coasters yep. and glasses. I mean, that's that's pretty awesome. You said your your mind runs a mile a minute. Um, yes. How many ideas have you had that just basically you were like, you did it and looked at it and you were like, eh, I hate this, and then just moved on? Um, a lot. And like I said, those are the ones that actually sell. <laughs> well, I, mean, if, I, I never sell, really good. remember the layout, so... I can't really make it again, let alone I probably wouldn't want to because it just looks too ugly for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. No, there's so much good stuff out here, man. I, I hope everyone goes to craftedballistics.com and checks it out. Um, if you, uh, so you're, you're obviously like shipping these products once the customer purchases it. Do you ever run into any shipping issues? Knock on wood, I haven't ran into any shipping issues yet. I have successfully shipped to Canada, South America, Um, I'm surprised. I mean, did they ask you what the contents are inside? Well, see, in in its current state of what it is, it's considered art Uh and a paperweight. So even if you tried putting that into a firearm, it wouldn't even fit. Yeah, which we found out. We found out via our prank call. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And then if I were to break it up with a hammer, Uh you probably wouldn't be able to break it up to the exact form it was made for the chamber. So even then, the resin probably messed up the gunpowder that was already in it or not in it. Interesting. Some customers want gunpowder, some some don't. Uh huh. Super cool, man. Yeah, it is cool. Um, pretty. I don't want to say I'm internationally known, but I have an order that I got to ship to Qatar, and I'm like, okay, should I ship this or should I not? Should I ship it? Should I not? Yeah, that's uh, that actually makes me question ITAR and stuff like that. I don't even know. Yeah, exactly. So it's weird. I, I have to look up ITAR. Um, one of my managers, he's pretty good with ITAR. I'm probably going to drill drill it, the bullet, uh-huh. so that way when they see at customs, okay, there's a drill in there, so there's no gunpowder in there, and mm-hmm. if there was, it'd be coming out. Mm-hmm. So maybe they might let it go. But even then, I'm, I have no intentions of, you know, obviously selling ammunition to whoever for right. them to shoot it. Right. But it's art. We'll see. For now, so far, nothing, nothing's happened. No problems. So you mentioned that you're going to go to SHOT Show this year. Um, which yes. by the time that this uh, this recording comes out, we would have already have gone to Shot Show. It's gonna come. It's gonna publish the week after Shot Show. And I had a great time. Uh, yeah. How did you enjoy yeah. your time? Uh, oh, what happened? I was so drunk the whole time. I don't know. <laughs> so um, <laughs> exactly. Is this gonna be your first time at Shot Show? Yes, it is. Are you? What are you looking forward to accomplish? Are you just looking forward to you know meeting people? I know you said you're gonna stop by the Barrett booth. But what's on your agenda? Exactly. I, I wanted to meet and greet face-to-face all the companies that I have worked for already. Mm-hmm. And I want to meet certain people like yourself and your crew and everybody else that's just not affiliated with Catholic Catholic Ballistics, but, you know, pretty much just touch base, bases with me mm-hmm. at one point in time. And I just want to meet them face-to-face and just say thanks for everything. Nice. Very cool. Are you going to come to our parties? I'm trying. Is it your party or is it Brownells' party? So Brownells is having one. Yeah. Which we will mm-hmm. be there. And that is on Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, we are having the Firearms Radio Network listener meetup. And that is uh, kind of everyone in the in the industry in the Firearms Radio Network plus Grizzly Targets. Um, that would be our party. 
and both are open to the public. So you should try to make it out to both. I'll give you uh, more info after the show. But again, this is coming out after the show. So Jonathan, did you enjoy both of our parties that you came to? <laughs> right. I was so messed up. I don't even know <laughs> if I even went to the right party. Perfect. You were there. Trust me. Uh, somehow you ended up wearing a lampshade on your head. I don't understand. It's a long story. It, yeah. It we'll explain later. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll definitely explain. <laughs> hey. So go ahead. Uh, so what I was going to say is, I see your stuff everywhere. Um, I see all kinds of cool stuff. I see people posting on Instagram. It seems like it's been fairly successful for you. Is that success ever a curse? Um, yes and no. Yes, because I'm pretty much doing a lot of it by myself. And no, because of the gratification that I get after the customers give me um, a review. And they tell me, like, dude, this is so awesome. And it's just that feeling is is really good do you have are there any other companies that are doing what you're doing right now i mean you don't have to mention them obviously but i mean is there yes, exactly. competition so yes there is there is approximately three but hmm. i cannot I, I i choose not to mention them but one of them's pretty famous and there's other two i don't want to say minor because I, I still think i'm minor too but as far as instagram followers go then yes they're kind of minors mm-hmm. uh, as far as products there's only one person that I'm competing against. Hmm. So do you think that it would be something that you would think about doing later on down the road, like possibly hiring people to create these products in order to increase production? Um, I look at it, I think about that and that business outlook, if you will, but uh-huh. at the same time, Picasso didn't. Yeah. So I still think, <laughs> Dang. <laughs> yeah. That's the name of this episode. Mike, Bullet, ballistic Mike Dro- Capos- Picasso. <laughs> Mike you know what Drop. I mean? Cause it, it's, it's artwork at, at the end. Mm-hmm. It is. It is. So, so I, I wouldn't want to, to be honest. And if I have to take that curse, then I'll take it. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. Let's talk about the danger of like this resin. You said that you add that catalyst. It creates that chemical reaction, which creates a lot of heat. There's obviously a lot of fumes and stuff going on. Any long-term health concerns? Uh, I believe there is, but I forgot after I read the warning. Oh, God. <laughs> I guess Perfect. time will tell, okay, right? It, 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 if you watch the YouTube videos, it tells you everything as far as like how to protect yourself from all this bad stuff. Uh-huh. But it's ORMD when I purchased it to begin with. So, okay, the government's telling me, okay, this is bad stuff. Be careful, you know? Yeah. So you have to wear a mask because of the fumes. It's better to do it outdoors or have two windows open and a fan blowing in your face. But I don't do any of that stuff. It's basically just done in in my garage. That's basically where Captive Ballistics is located. It's home based business, and I pretty much do it in the garage. And That's you're awesome. married, correct? Yes, I am. What does your wife think about all of this? <laughs> she says it's cool. Um, she says I still don't see any money. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, I. Ninety percent of it usually goes back into the business to buy higher end uh, projectiles mm-hmm. and just more material. And this is my first business, and I've only done it for a couple of months. Like you know that Ava, and it's like it's crazy because there's a lot of stuff that goes into a business that mm-hmm. I didn't really think about. Yeah, and not to mention, I mean, work. if we're talking about art, it's really not going to be worth anything until you die. I hate to say it. Yeah, yeah, it's true. <laughs> even, even one of my friends say that he goes, "Dude, you know, if you put this in resin." hundred years past, you know, you're going to be famous. Yep. I said, well, yeah, but I won't be there. <laughs> yeah, but we're going to cast you in resin. So, I mean, you will in <laughs> essence. <laughs> yes. The biggest mold ever. Yeah. <laughs> For the best, uh, um, artist. <laughs> one last question where, well, not my last question, but what is your best seller? And then I have a question right after that. Hmm, like to date, what have you sellers- sold the most of? The best sellers right now currently are the um, Ultimate block that I just recently released as well as the interactive pieces. Uh, You know, if you will, the definition of a pew, that one, and the uh, Ultimate block. I have Ultimate block of a 9 and a 45, which is the same size as the Barrett, but instead of the Barrett, it's actually uh, 10 rounds of different manufacturers that show the projectile um, shot and unfired. Okay. So it would give kind of uh, it would give viewers kind of a, a good idea of of what sort of expansion to expect from each uh, brand of ammo. Yes, correct. Exactly. Nice. Dang, that's pretty cool. 
So, uh, what do you think? Where do you see this going? Where Where do you, uh, you know, what do you think your future holds with Crafted Ballistics? Um, it. I think it's going to be pretty positive. I mean, when I met you, Ava, I didn't think much of it. And next thing you know, everyone just started buying it. And all of a sudden, I have big bullet companies reaching out to me that I didn't think they were going to even call me. Mm-hmm. And that was pretty amazing. But I, I'll keep doing it until somebody stops buying it or everyone stops buying it. Mm-hmm. But in the meantime, if they can just buy it and appreciate it for what it is, then I'll, I'll keep doing it because... Maybe they don't like what the other person's making or the other companies, you know, they, or maybe they just want something made for them, not necessarily on my catalog, but I'll make them something custom that they can't do. Mm-hmm. Have you ever thought about long putting... Term. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, but long term, I'll stay, I'll stay in it long term because it's something I love. And they say, well, you'll never work a day if you find something you love doing. So, okay. You think that's I true? I feel like I'm working, but I love it. <laughs> Do you think that that's true? Because I used to think that. And I mean, I love what I'm doing, but this shit, you know, right now yeah. I'm drinking a beer and it, it still feels like I'm working. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I already killed it my is. beer. I feel great. It's true. <laughs> Have you ever thought about putting art in art or something other than bullets? Like maybe people love those, uh, what are they, morale patches? Maybe put some morale patches oh, yeah. in some resin? Yeah. Um, insignias. I do um, law enforcement insignias. Not even that. Let's, let's not even talk about like the firearm industry i got people asking me hey can you have my relatives ashes in resin so that way i could just keep them next to the fire Hmm. i wonder if my mom would like that she probably would yeah i do i'll I'll do that too and i get weird requests like hey i got a skeleton of a bat can you put that in resin (laughs) it's like wow yeah or a hummingbird i've gotten weird ones like that but it's just something that they want to keep forever because that stuff's fragile Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've got the skeleton of a child. Don't ask. Uh, can we put that in resin? Yes, you can. And okay, that can great. Be used against you in a court of law. <laughs> Good luck getting it out of the resin. <laughs> yes. All right. So we called you. Uh, what was it? Like a week, two weeks ago. A we make weeks a prank. Ago. We made a prank call. We were just sitting around yeah. trying to figure out who to prank, and uh, you kind of seem like a pretty good target. Should we play it? <laughs> I think we should. Here we go. <laughs> play it. <laughs> It's time for Prank Calls with Malcolm and Gertrude. Honey! Uh, hi, hi, how are you? Uh, I ordered one of your... Um, you, you crafted ballistics or whatever you call it. And um, the problem is, is I just can't get it out of the case. I want to, you know, I, I'm trying to use the product, but it won't come. Hello? Yes, I'm sorry. I can barely hear you. Sorry about that. Uh, so I, I was just wondering, how do I get your product out of the case? What do you mean out of the case? Well, so I want to use it, but I just can't get it out of the plastic casing. What did you order, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, so I ordered, it's one of your newest products. Uh, let me see, what is it called? Hold on, let me, I'm on your website. It's like the 300 Blackout Subsonic. Uh-huh. Wait, you so, wanted to take it out of the case and use it? Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, I, I bought it, and I want to shoot it, and I can't get it out of the case. What's the hardest? I don't understand. What's what's so complicated? Oh, well, see, that's the thing. They weren't, they weren't, it's not made to be shot. It's, it's casted in resin, and it's used for display purposes, paperweights. I don't know. So why would I buy such expensive, such expensive ammo that I can't even shoot? I'm not sure. I mean, that's, a paperweight? I mean, like, I could use anything for a paperweight. Yeah, that's true. You can. So you, so what you're saying is I bought this expensive piece of uh, resin, and I can't shoot it, and I'm just supposed to look at it. 
Mm, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can you uh, tell me what what, in, what invoice number you have? Uh, yeah. Hold on. Let me look it up. In fact, you know what? Sure, no problem. I'm going to put my husband on the phone because I'm sure he's, I, I use, you know, I'm a stay at home wife. I used his credit card to order this. I thought that it would be a special gift. I thought it was some sort of special ammo, this 300 blackout. And, uh, and I just, I'm going to be in trouble for this. So I'm just going to put him on the phone. I, I can't, uh, no I can't. Problem, handle, okay. No okay. Problem. Hold on. Hold on. No worries. Malcolm. Yeah. Can you get on the phone, please? And don't be mad. Promise you won't be mad. Don't yell at me, okay? I'm not going to guarantee anything. Just pick up the phone. (laughs) Hello, this is Malcolm. Hello? Hello? Hi, who's this? Hi, this is Jonathan. Uh, I can barely hear you. I'm not sure if I'm on speaker or not, but you're sound far away. Uh, Sorry, is this better? I I think we should. Uh, Gertie, are you still on there, the line? Yes. Hang it up. You okay. he can't hear me. Okay, hold on. <laughs> okay, is this better? Hello? Uh, sounds the same. <laughs> sounds the same, but go ahead. I, uh, did, did you need to talk to me about something? I don't understand. What, 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 uh, what did she sure. need? I, I, she t- just told me uh, to get on the phone. I don't know what we're talking about. Uh, I guess she ordered a piece from my website. Okay, cool. That it's, uh, oh, the ammunition. It's a- yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, we've been trying to get that thing open. Uh, I've busted a couple of the wheels on the Dremel. I just, uh, <laughs> she said that it was some fancy new packaging and a really expensive, excellent ballistic ammunition. Um, uh, we were trying to get it out, but I just, I guess we don't understand. Do we, like, put it in water and it, and it, it just melts <laughs> away and then we use the ammunition or we it got to load it? I, I don't really understand. She bought it for Christmas. Uh, and I, oh, um. What kind of ammunition was it? What what kind of blackout? Uh, I believe it was the three hundred blackout. Mm. I got one of those rifles. Oh, you did. Well, I got the rifle, yeah, and then we were just looking for the ammunition. I heard it was a little bit expensive, but uh, she said it was like some uh, the best ammo she's ever seen. <laughs> oh, probably because it's it's probably hard to get. Possibly. Okay, great. Uh, so anyway, can we get back to the the procedure <laughs> to get it out of the packaging? Well, see, that's the thing. It's it's plastered all over my website that it's not ammunition and it's just a paperweight display. A paperweight? G- Gertie, what did you order? I told you <laughs> not, not to be mad at me. Well, you can't say don't be mad when you do stupid things all the time. It was just a Christmas gift and I thought I was doing the right thing and I kind of figured it was a special ammo and I wanted it to be very special for you. Well, it's definitely special, and now I've got something to hold paper down, even though it's 2017 and we don't use paper. <laughs> yeah. Um, what invoice number do you have? I honestly, you know what, I, I don't know. Obviously, she doesn't know what she's doing here. Uh, I'm going to, you said your name was Ned? <laughs> Jonathan. Oh, Jonathan, I'm so sorry. I, I think she's wasted both of our time, honestly, and I, I've had it. I, I'll have her look it up, I don't know. But, uh, you know, it's very beautiful. I really appreciate the craftsmanship that you put into it. I just thought that we were going to be able to shoot it, and now I've ruined a bunch of Dremel wheels, and uh, this is just a huge mess. Uh, thank you very much, Hector. I really appreciate uh, you taking the time, and I'll deal with Gertie on my own. Thank you very much. All right. <laughs> so what was going through your mind when we pranked you? Oh, that was pretty weird. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> order this. You're like those liberals that are right, the gun the gun community, they're idiots. <laughs> I loved when you were just like, I don't understand. <laughs> I was like, just stay calm, be provide great customer service. <laughs> isn't that And you definitely did. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Um isn't it tough like when you own your own business and like you just have somebody who's just just so dumb and you just really, really want to tell them off, but you can't. We Um Yes, there's there's a few. No, oh, you know, well, I'm no, glad you no only name, have a few. Everyone gets the same treatment across the board. <laughs> oh, that's that's interesting because I treat people like absolute garbage. Don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a pretty prank, a pretty funny prank call. It's 2017. What do I need a paperweight for? <laughs> <laughs> My favorite part is how I so nonchalantly call you the wrong name every time. Yes, Ned. <laughs> and then Hector. H- Hector. <laughs> yes. 
Oh, so ridiculous. Uh, so yeah, thanks for being a good sport. And honestly, thanks for the, the excellent customer service. Cause I seriously would have like screamed profanity and hung up about two minutes into that call. <laughs> I bet you would have. <laughs> Definitely. What's next, Deva? Cool. Let's talk about a gun that I got. Let's talk about a gun that you got. Tactic Talk. Discussing popular guns and gear. Love it? Hate it? Find out now. Uh, a company recently sent me a Glock 19, and it's from DC Precision. And basically what he does is he'll take a stock Glock and uh, kind of jazz it up. He'll put, uh, you know, a new barrel. He'll mill out the slide, um, change out the sights, change out the trigger. Uh, he'll stipple the frame. And so he sent it to me just to try out. And I finally had a chance to go to the range um, after having it for what, like a month? It's uh, about that, yeah. a <laughs> sad day. <laughs> um, but anyway, so I finally tried it out. And there was a few things that I loved and there was a few things that I didn't love. Um, so I really liked the Cerakote job. He did a good job on that. Uh, the slide work, great job as well. Uh, things that I didn't really care for is um, I didn't care for the stippling as much. There was a lot of inconsistencies with it. And not so much with the grip, but that little, what is that little part called? Um, uh, the the brake pedal? or Yeah. So that part, it didn't really, it didn't look as great. And then um, he actually, he stippled the beaver tail of the gun so that when I was shooting it, Obviously, that's the only thing that's really moving when you shoot, other than your finger. Um, so it kept kind of rubbing in that little section yeah, of my grip. Pretty aggressive. And, and so, uh, full disclosure, I am not a stippling guy. Like I hate stippling. Um, so it's, I don't. I don't hate it. Yeah. I actually, I think that it's useful, especially um, because people have to think about like if you are ever in a defensive situation, you have to use your gun. Let's say you're hurt, you're bleeding. I think that stuff like that, it's going to help for you to grip the gun a little bit better as opposed to it just slipping out of your hands. It's, I've yet to ever, you know, shoot a gun where it was like if they had stippling done where it shoots great, you know, it it obviously does kind of wear on your hands, but I specifically didn't like that it went all the way up to the beaver tail. Um, And then also the trigger I didn't care for as much, which he uses a apex trigger. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, which one was it? It was the Apex Action Enhancement Trigger, forward slash Ghost Evo Elite Connector, forward slash Polish and Tune. So it looks like that's what he did to the trigger. I was not a fan of that Apex Trigger at all. So I would go to, you know, I'd shoot the gun, I'd go to reset it, and the trigger didn't guide forward with my finger. So it's like I had to push, you know. You had to wait for the reset. Yeah. That. And that was so annoying. I hate that. That's my biggest pet peeve with triggers. And there's a lot of triggers that do that. That's dangerous, in my opinion. I don't want to wait for the reset. The trigger shouldn't follow my finger. I mean, the trigger trigger should reset against my finger, not after my finger moves. Yeah. And that's that's kind of what happened. So, yeah, I've got an apex that I hate as well. I don't know if it's just apex or if I haven't drank the Kool-Aid yet or if it's just an example of two that we just don't necessarily like. But. I mean, this gun has great things about it. The Cerakote, the slide works great. The edges on the stippling, I think, are great. Um, yeah. And even on his Instagram, like, I think he sent me one of his, like, first, you know, trial guns because I know it's a new company. So on his Instagram, he's posting uh, where a lot of the guns, they look, like, even that, that stippling work on some of them um, looks a lot better. So... I think just with any company, you're kind of just, you know, getting your feet wet and then sort of trial and error. And that's probably why he sent a few guns off to different people so that he can get feedback, which is great because any company that values feedback is excellent. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I don't, I don't hate the company. Um, like I said, there's a lot of good things that he's done and I'm sure that, you know, just the minor things like you could always request a different trigger request that if you're like me and if the beaver tail is stippled and it kind of rubs on your hand, um, you know, you could always just have him stipple so far, you know, so far up and then just stop just as, you know, kind of where you grip the gun. 
So if you guys are interested in checking him out, he is on Instagram um, as well as uh, you can go to dcprecision.us and uh, and then pull up his stuff. Uh, it is veteran owned company. And lots and, of awesome pictures on there as well. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then definitely check out his Instagram as well. And his Instagram is uh, DP Precision Inc. Or I'm sorry, DP Precision LLC. All right. Good stuff. So, Ava, it's time to read uh, some iTunes reviews. And we've got two more this week. Uh, we've actually got more. We only do two a week just because we don't want to read iTunes reviews for a half hour. So who's going to read them? Me? You? You. All right. I'm going to read them. Five stars from Mark K9. Fun podcast. Great podcast. Very entertaining. Next review. I think that's, you know, short and to the point. Said yeah. everything you need to say. Boom. I like it. Man of very few words. And then uh, also five stars from Iowa Shop Teacher. Great podcast. This is a great podcast. Being a shop teacher, I always push my students to do hard things to challenge themselves. That almost sounds inappropriate. Uh, this podcast gives me the opportunity to challenge my ears whenever Malcolm and Gertrude show up. <laughs> I try to push through the point of when my ears start to bleed. Just kidding. It's all good and humorous stuff. Keep up the great work. Thanks for what you do, Iowa shop teacher. And to you, Iowa shop teacher, I say, uh, well, I, you know, just the thing is, is that sometimes. Well, I don't I, understand. I, yeah. I mean, the truth why, is, why I mean, you think this so is bad. You should just hear just me when just, I'm in the bed, you know? Oh, God, oh yeah. Even. When I'm making love in the sack, you should hear me then. I mean, oh. you think it's bad now. Oh, wait. My ears are bleeding. <laughs> anyway, thanks for the reviews. Are we selecting a winner this week? Yeah, why not? Let's do the Iowa shop teacher. Boom. Winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. <clears throat> what does he win? Uh, let's say... Patch. Yeah, actually, we Gun Funny finally got a patch. We have our own patches, and the first person to get it was a Patreon. Actually, no, she won. Uh, the first she person, won a while back. It first was person to get it was me. No, uh, you don't have one. I opened the package and took one. Are you kidding me right now? Did you really? Yeah. Wow, so you're already stealing from the company. Yeah. yeah. You're yep. going to have to return that. It's not within the budget. I, uh, I don't have it anymore. <laughs> okay, yeah. I traded it for Jack Daniels. Well, Get off my okay, back. Okay, <laughs> you're going to have to pay for it. <laughs> and and don't think that you're going to get this, you know, being part of the company discount. You're paying full MSRP for it. I feel like I'm living on planet <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> My boss is an asshole. <laughs> All right. Iowa shop teacher, contact us and you get a patch. But the first person to actually get a patch was Krista. All right. That's awesome. The second person. And she's also a patron now. I love it. All right. So first off, Jonathan, thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you, guys. We really appreciate it. And uh, where can people find you online? People can find me online at www.craftedballistics.com. And on my social media site, on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash crafted ballistics. And on Instagram, it's crafted ballistics or crafted underscore ballistics. Cool. Right on. Cool. Um, and should we wrap up? I think so. Let's uh, first off remind them that they can find us at all the different places. Ava, what are those places? I forget. We're on all the places. All the places. Are we on uh, Twitter? Yes. We are? Mm-hmm. Wow. Are we on MySpace? Uh, well, that's the one place. No. Is MySpace even still around? Are we on Live Journal? No. Oh. Okay. Well, so I guess we're not on all the places. We're just on all the current, wow. current wait. places. Yeah. Way to make me look stupid in front of our <laughs> listeners. My bad. You can find us at gunfunny.com, and we're also on all of the social media. That's important. Okay, okay all MySpace, the important social media. So we're MySpace, on, we're not on there. We're on MeWe. Oh, my God. Just shut up. <laughs> we're on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, iTunes. Um, Twitter, Stitcher, Google Play Podcasts, everywhere. You can find us everywhere. Can I, can I add something to it? Absolutely. Yeah. So for anybody who was listening to the show, you guys can get uh, 10% off on your order if you'd like on Crafted Ballistics just put in the code GUNFUNNY10 nice awesome right away. All right, I'm going to put it in the show notes right now hails to the yeah and Ava can you tell me what's going on with this patron thing are people liking this I think so yeah we're, we're getting new patreons uh, not every day but fairly regularly can I just point something out real quick yeah that you may not have noticed so guys if you're looking for a place to meet chicks that like guns I think it's the patreon group the Facebook uh, patreon group because it's basically mostly chicks 
Yeah, it's definitely giving Tinder a run for its money. Yeah, I haven't seen any like matches made or anything like that. But <laughs> like for real, if you want to meet chicks that are into guns, like hey, you you need to become a Patreon, and that's patreon.com slash gunfunny. And you know what? Uh, that pledge that you guys get, so a dollar, you get access to our Facebook page. Uh, Three dollars, access to our Snapchat. Five dollars gets you into a monthly raffle, which I mean, there's honestly there's about twenty patrons right now, so your odds of winning are pretty good. Uh, you get exclusive limited edition T-shirts, shout out on the show, and you might even have an opportunity to be a guest on the show. And chicks in the Facebook group that like guns. Mm-hmm. That's true. Uh, we are also doing a uh, King of Patreon, so whoever is the highest patreon whoever pledges the most we are going to shout out their name or their company and then if they want to you know to give us a little tell us you know what we should say yeah blurb like for a company this is this is a deal man you can basically just get some advertising at the end of every show give us a blurb give us a coupon code all you have to do is remain the king of the patreons and whoever does that we're going to read it mm-hmm. but for right now the king of the patreon is corbin Car- carbon carbon yep yep uh Fidabana. yeah Corbin Bonafide. Yes, that is We appreciate guy. you. And again, patreon.com, patreon.com slash gunfunny. And, uh, you know, Jonathan, thanks for being here. Ava, fun as always. Again. Yeah, well, I'm sober, so I'm not that super, I'm not super fun, but I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll drink your beer faster. Want to send feedback? Suggest a place to prank call? Tell us about a company or anything else. Go to gunfunny.com forward slash contact.